Either Zach would say it or Jenna would say, is that all? <laughs> I'm sorry. And that's the best we could do. I'm sorry you didn't get much. But that it was just the joy of opening up and the surprise. But Zach, isn't that how the Word of God is? Yes. If you keep looking and you keep opening up, there's more. Oh, yeah. And for 30 some years I've been trying to teach and preach the Christmas story. Toby, by the way, you did a good job, buddy. And you know what? Every year I think, well, I've done milked Luke 1 and Luke 2 out. And there ain't nothing else left. And man, I'm going to have to re-gift these people. people. But you know what? If I just keep reading and looking, oh, you're right, the Lord gives me something to open. <coughs> now the Bible says in chapter 2, verse 7 of Luke, she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Yeah, preacher, I got that a long time ago. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be all to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel that spoke to these shepherds a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on them, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. All right, preacher, what's a surprise? Down through all the Bible since the beginning, beginning of time. But the time when the Lord would begin to deal with people and he would ask people to do his work or be obedient to him. The first words that they would give to him or, or the first thoughts that they would think would, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough. Now pay close attention. And even today, as we minister to people, they'll say, oh, I've done too much wrong. As Toby was teaching, I, man, I, I, I'm cursed. But Jack, as I began to think this week, and I was reading over this, and when I got to the shepherds, I stopped. It's like the Spirit said, stop. And I stopped, and Ronnie, I read that verse, but there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. And I backed up and I read it again. There were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And I backed up and I read it again. Then I thought, uh-oh. Last week I preached a funeral and I talked about the woman of Samaria out of St. John chapter 4. She looked at Jesus and said, Ye being a Jew, why talkest to me, a woman of Samaria? Listen to me. Did you know that shepherds was despised by the Christians, by the church? Wait a minute. If you'll read history, you'll find out. Why was they despised by the church, by the Christians, by the righteous? Because the job, the task of being a shepherd, seven days a week, they had nothing for nobody else. They had to watch over their flocks. And they was rejected by the church. You say, preacher, no, do some research, you'll find out. They was rejected by the church of shepherds was. And can't you imagine 
of them shepherds, Brother Johnny, out there on that hill. Maybe night after night or day after day, they begin to talk about the Scripture. Maybe they would discuss the Scripture. And they may have even said, what, wonder how it be to be visited by God as some of the old prophets. Or maybe Zach, they even talked about this promised Messiah that was coming. They probably had no idea that they was going to be a part of it, Ronnie. Do you get what I'm... Bless the Lord forever. I don't know about you, but that's about the way I felt. I knew that God was real, James. And everybody was enjoying him, but I... Man, I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to have a relationship with you. You're right. Let me tell you something else about shepherds. They stunk. There's Jessica. She's late. Everybody look at her. She's got an excuse, though. I'm just picking on her. Let me tell you something else about shepherds. Shepherds stunk. They stayed out there with sheep and they stunk. And Lenny, Dad, if you would ask him the day before, you said, Do you think that you're going to be a part of this thing? Do you think that you're going to get, you're going to be the first one to receive them? Them shepherds would have said, No way. The church done told us we're not good enough, we're not righteous enough. There's no way that we'll be a part of it. Thank God, friend, if you're here this morning and you feel like you went too far, God Almighty will visit you. Amen. Amen. Come on, I don't know about you. Zach, like there was people in town work. There was prophets. There, were, there was good people. Jonathan lived good. But there were some lonely shepherds out on the hillside that needed encouraged. Out of all the people that was in town that night, blessed be the name of the Lord, the angel of the Lord came down to some stinking shepherds, somebody that was outcast and said, Hey, boys, you may be feeling down, but behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. I'm supposing, I'm a thinking, and it's legal, God give me a mind. Earlier in the night, they could have been sipping a little bit. But to back it up, behind that angel was a heavenly host. Oh, yeah. oh bless the Lord forever. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord guided him to that lowly stable. Right, Andy, I thought about that time and time again. Why shepherds? We've had Christmas plays. And man, I, I could either be a shepherd or a donkey. It don't take a whole much. Not much speaking part. Why in the world did he speak to shepherds? Come on, Bruce. It's because he wanted the outcast to know, the despised, the rejected to know that the Son of God came for whosoever will. And if you're here this morning and you feel despised, if you feel rejected, if you feel like you stink to the rest of the world, listen. If you'll listen real close and pay close attention. God will send an angel from heaven. He'll come himself. And he'll speak to you this morning and let you know that there's good tidings of great joy. Got good news for you. You can be saved. Unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I've used 598 of my 600 seconds. Would you stand? here this morning and you don't know the Lord and pardon and forgiveness of sin 
You say, Richard, I kind of feel like a shepherd. I don't, I don't feel like I fit in with everybody else. In my past, I feel like I've been rejected by the church. I'm embarrassed for that. They anybody ought to love you, it ought to be the church. Richard, I kind of feel left out. I got good news for you. I once was an old stinking shepherd. I felt rejected and cast out. Right, I'm telling you what the angel of the Lord paid me a visit. Amen. Being the Spirit of God and convicted yes. my heart. And I am now, praise God, part of that family. Amen. Right. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we praise you for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, for how that you've blessed. And we thank you for a wonderful service. Lord, I know you've spoke to hearts, not a doubt in my mind. And I would ask that Zach prepares a verse in the course of song. That you would give someone courage to slip out of the seat. Come on, Jessica. Consider the lilies. May I introduce you to this friend of mine. All oh, the Son of God. Amen. Thank Blessed you. be the name of the Lord. As they sing, I would like for you to slip out of your seat, make your way down to this altar, and make peace with God.